Welcome to the Private Equity Show with Ace Chapman. With 20 years experience, Ace discusses own firms, recent activities, target industries, desired acquisition profiles, closing pitches, and more. Learn from other successful industry leaders and get the behind-the-scenes candid details about private equity funds, how they work, how they thrive, and how you can run one too. And now your host, Ace Chapman. What is up, folks? Just got done with a workout, so you get to sing with the guns out today. <laughs> so I was having a conversation uh, with uh, with the client as I was doing my workout, and uh, it made me think of a video I wanted to do for you guys. So um, one of the ways that I view private equity, that I view kind of um, the process of doing deals is as conversations. And when it comes to the private equity conversation, <clears throat> it's a lot different than most other investments. So you take something like uh, the stock market, if you invest in a stock, essentially you're having a, a conversation that's um, between you and, and one other party, really. And that party does represent the whole market, but the conversation it can only be uh, the market saying, hey, we think this is worth more, and so the stock goes up, or we think this is worth less, and so the stock goes down. And it, your job is to kind of anticipate the way that the market's going to view it in the future. So uh, when you compare that to uh, the conversation that that happens or takes place in private equity, there are all of these parties that are involved. And so it's almost like being at a big dinner at a round table and you're getting feedback from all of these uh, different parties that are involved. So if you compare the two with the stock market, you're getting feedback really just one way. It's like, is the stock going up? Is the stock going down? Is it worth more or less? There's one collective party. In private equity, there's a lot of different parties and it's part of what creates the, the amazing opportunity that exists. Um, because it's your job to creatively take that input, take that feedback that those different parties are giving you and figure out how to make the most of it. Um, so it's definitely not just a one way conversation. That's what, you know, that's when people get into trouble. You know, if you get into this space and you, you think it's a monologue, uh, as opposed to a conversation, you're like, okay. I want this to happen, I want this to happen, I want this to happen. And you, if you, if you go into uh, any investment, but especially private equity with that kind of mentality, uh, you miss out on the, on the big opportunity because it's that feedback and being able to take that and be creative and turn it into something that, um, that creates the opportunity and it's so funny i have so many conversations especially in the times that we're in right now where i'm talking to somebody and you know it just happened uh with a, a long time part but so you know someone was like oh man this is such bad news like i'm so sorry ace i'm bringing you this bad news on this deal like my apologies man and most of the time i'm like okay like no reason to apologize like it's it's to the point now where I literally don't believe in bad news. <laughs> it's as crazy as that is, you know, especially when it comes to business. Uh, you know, if something happens to family or something happens outside or something happens to my health, like that could be bad news. But in business, like there's just no bad news. There's only lack of creativity in being able to respond to that feedback. And the, the tough thing here is that for most people, the way that you build up the creativity to be able to answer any problem, I mean, you know, you, you want to um, really, you know, the goal should be to be able to get to a point where anybody can bring you any problem. And not in, in, in like there are literally two cases just this week where I had two different people bring me back two uh, pieces of bad news. And in both cases, I literally, in one case, uh, came with a solution that basically we're going to uh, double the amount of money that we we're supposed to make uh, originally. And in the other case, we're actually going to save from the problem. We're actually going to end up spending about $4,000 uh, less a month for it as, uh, uh, in, as a result of coming up with a solution to that problem. So the the key when you're when you're kind of starting off with this stuff is 
And and this is really tough. I'm not saying this like, oh, just go do it. I know there's just a, a lot of kind of uh, uh, emotion around dealing with problems and having bad news and, and those kinds of things. But if you can shift your attitude towards getting excited about problems and getting excited because it's going to uh, make you better as a, uh, a artist in, in private equity of being able to create uh new solutions that actually in every problem make you more money um eventually that excitement becomes real because you know okay it just happened so many times and and it's also interesting for me because i'm like in in both of those cases i'm on the phone and you know i'm thinking about this on friday and and you know uh the guy's like well okay so what are we gonna do and i'm like i don't know yet but it'll something good that's gonna come to me. <laughs> I, I have to have time. I'll put this in my head. And like, you know, my subconscious is so used to uh, dealing with these kinds of things and, and has seen so many cases. Another part of this is just always studying every business that's on the market. I, I, uh, I just, I don't know. I guess some people say they have these goals and it's so weird to me that that people don't take advantage of just the most low hanging, easy fruit. The easiest thing to do is just call and talk to every business that's on the market. You learn so much. And, and I'd say that and, you know, just people don't do it, but that's how you build this database that it just sits in your subconscious. You have this valuable computer with all of the, this information. And so, you know, when, when you have the, the opportunity to talk to the top 1% of entrepreneurs, because the, these are people that made through the gauntlet, have a proper business, have a sellable asset, and you can actually learn from them to not take advantage of that just tells me that you're not serious. Like you're, you're not really trying to uh, do this. <laughs> so that that's part of it. But then the other part is when you're in deals or dealing with problems or just negotiating a deal or, or dealing with a broker and trying to overcome that with each one of the problems. Um, I think that that there's this desire for like a easy answer and it's almost like math. Like if you are getting good at math, um, yes, two plus two equals four is an easy, is an easy thing. And it's an easy win. But if you don't learn those more complicated things, you're never going to get better at math. And it's like that in deals, you know, when people reach out and they just want an easy answer, it's like, okay, so basically your goal is not to try to figure things out and learn things and, and come up with complicated answers on, on your own. It's just, okay, give me the cliff note version. Give me the cliff note version. Give me the cliff note version. Um, and, and that's really kind of the, the, um, the easy route that doesn't lead to you being a good deal maker. <clears throat> and also um, just means that when you do get into uh, the the business that you want in, it's that million dollar business, a great business, everything's going well. And so the first problem comes up, you won't be able to come up with the creative answers that you need to be able to come up with in order to make that business survive and thrive and, and all of that. And so, uh, you know, I get the question like, man, how in the world, you know, one minute, uh, you know, one of the problems this week uh, was in a, the, the 3D animation business. And uh, another problem uh, this week was in a online uh, e-commerce business. And so you have these different things. And, you know, and I got a portfolio of a lot of different businesses, just took, took a business public. Uh, dealing with uh, royalties on one end and financial instruments and, and all of that uh, over to selling toilets. <laughs> so and there's a, a, a the ability to answer problems in all of those different businesses only is only going to come through experience. So if you're somebody that wants to build a portfolio of businesses, you got to be willing to uh, get excited about coming up with creative answers two problems, dealing with problems, uh, seeing every problem as an opportunity and understanding that, that, you know, this is a very complex conversation between 
investors and sellers and other private equity funds and potential buyers and customers of the businesses and employees and the operator. You know, it's just like all of this feedback comes into you as a private equity investor. And you can try to treat it like it's a monologue. And, and that's kind of what I was talking to this uh, client about today. It's like, this isn't a monologue. My guy, I love you. I want you to get what you want, but trying to go into your deal and say, hey, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what's going to happen, this is what I'm build, this is my goal. Da, 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 da. It's like none of that matters. It, what's way, way more valuable is just listening. Just, hey, give me, you know, you tell me, well, give me the feedback. What's the customer feedback? What's the employee feedback? What's the seller's feedback? Like, you know, just looking at what are their goals. And then um, basically turning their goal into a way to help you achieve achieve your goal. So if, you, if you're getting them closer to their goal, make those milestones things that also get you closer to your goal. And that's where that creativity uh, comes into play. And and you know it's funny because I, I I liken it to conversations, but it literally is. I mean, the better conversationalist you are in, in creatively answering those uh, that feedback and and those problems, uh, the better, better deal maker you're going to be. From raising capital from investors to negotiating the best deal with the seller to having a great relationship with your operator to keeping employees happy to making sure uh, customers are are always anticipating your your service or product. All of those things uh, come from. Uh, getting creative as a deal maker. If this stuff is valuable for you, be sure to subscribe. Uh, be sure to comment. I'm probably going to do a live later. Subscribe so you can know when I go live uh, and answer questions and, and all of that. And if you're somebody who's interested in starting your own private equity fund, uh, reach out. Uh, AceChapman.com. And I'm, I've been getting a little more active just because we're in freaking quarantine and so much is going on. I've been getting more active on Instagram. Uh, so follow me there, ace.chat and private.equity, both of those. All right, later guys. Hey there, thank you so much for checking out the episode. If you're somebody who's interested in learning more about private equity or even buying your first business, uh, be sure to subscribe and don't be afraid to send us any questions or put those in the comments. If you're somebody that wants to take action now, uh, feel free to visit acechapman.com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter uh, because there we'll update you on news that's happening in the micro private equity space, opportunities that we see in the market, as well as events that are coming up uh, like our live training events. If you want to reach out to me directly, feel free to hit me on Instagram. It's at ace.chapman or shoot us an email, ace at acechapman.com. Thank you again for checking out the episode. And like I said, be sure to subscribe.